G'day, it's James here, back with another end of 2020 video. In this video, we're gonna be looking at how to install Home Assistant on an Intel Nook. We're gonna be using this one just here. It's almost brand new, I've had it out of its box and I've been meaning to do this video for some time. In addition to the Intel Nook, you'll need to have some memory. I've got four gigabytes of sodium, sodium memory, which should be ample for this system. And I've got an SSD solid state drive, which is 240 gigabytes. Now these components cost just under 300 Australian dollars. So it's more expensive than a Raspberry Pi. But one of the reasons that I use this system is because it's quick and easy to set up. And once it's set up, everything about it runs faster and it's just a little bit more reliable. And every time you need to reboot it, it reboots really quickly. And that's why I um, sometimes or often use these systems for jobs that I do for other people. Now to do it, to install it, there's a number of ways that you can do it, but I use a drive dock and I flash the image of Home Assistant onto the drive. Uh, I do it that way because it's, I do it a number of times, quite often, and it's just quicker and easier to do it that way. So that's the method I'm gonna be using today to show you. So to get started, I'll jump on the computer, I'll get the drive dock and we'll flash the Home Assistant image onto here. Then we'll come back and we'll install everything inside the Nook, and then we'll turn it on and set it up. All right, let's do that now. Okay, so I'm on my computer now and I have got my drive dock plugged in and my SSD in the drive dock. If you've come to the Home Assistant website, you can download the image for the Intel Nook, which is this one just here. I've actually downloaded that already. So that's the image that we need to get in order for this to work. And once you've downloaded that, we can open up Belina Etcher. Now, Belina Etch is available both on Mac and Windows, and that'll etch the um, image to our SSD drive. So we'll select the image that we just downloaded, which is this one just here. We'll open it up, we'll select our hard drive dock, which is that one there, and we will flash it. Okay, while that's flashing, it shouldn't take too long. I'll just point out that this um, setup in will install Home Assistant with Home Assistant OS or Home Assistant Operating System. And that is probably, it's not the only way you can install Home, Assist Home Assistant without the Home Assistant Operating System, but it will install it with that and it will also install it with the supervisor. So this is gonna be a supervised version of Home Assistant and Basically, the supervisor does all the cleaning up and fixing and changing things around automatically, which makes this device act much like an appliance, which will obviously make it more reliable. So that's one of the other reasons why I use this, because of the reliability of it, especially if I'm putting it in someone else's place. And it's, it's someone that doesn't want to mess around with changing settings and whatnot. Probably if you have a your own system and you want to mess with it, you can use another method of installing Home Assistant. All right, while we're waiting for our disk to flash, I'll just quickly show you this. Usually when I get a new Intel Nook and I get it out of the box, I'll, I'll do a, a BIOS update. Now you don't necessarily have to do this, but in the past I have had problems with installing Home Assistant and it's been an update of the BIOS that has fixed the problem. So I, I, I now just do it because it doesn't take very long. Um, the one I've got, I've already updated the BIOS on it, but it's got, um, you can download the latest BIOS for your particular Nook because there's different versions and model numbers that they have on here. So you find the right version for your particular Nook, download that, and then it's got some really good instructions here and a number of different methods you can choose. Now I've tried all of these methods and I think I prefer the F7 update method, which is this one just here. And I have used this one here, the UEFI shell update a few times as well. So I'd probably start with the F7 update method first if you're gonna, if you're gonna do, go ahead and do that. This is not necessarily something you have to do, but it's something that I do usually do. Okay, so that's all flashed and completed. It only took a minute or two. We can now take it outside and pop it into our Nook, and then we can bring it back in, and we've got to make a few changes. So we have to plug a monitor into it and a keyboard, and we'll have to go into the BIOS just to make it one or two changes, and then it'll be ready to go. Okay, so I've got my knock here, and if you turn it over, you can just undo these screws on the bottom just here. 
already done that. We can just lift this out of here. Now we can actually unplug this tray if we're just carefully. So we'll put that tray over there. Now we'll first we'll put the memory in. So you just have to make sure that you line this the slot up here. So we'll just slot that in there like that. Once it's in, it should easily push down. Right, sorry. And so that's just in place now. Then we can get our drive cage. If we look down there, we should be able to see, make sure we get our connections around the right way. Uh, like so. And then we should be able to just slot this in like that. And push it in firmly. So that's in place now. We can carefully put our connectors back on. And have the front arrow pointing to the front. And then we can screw it back up. Alright, now we're going to take this inside. We're going to put a monitor and keyboard on it. And we'll just do some settings in the BIOS. So that it works properly. Okay, so I plugged in my mouse, my keyboard and the monitor into the Nook. And with, um, hold F2 and turn it on. And you'll end up in the in the BIOS. Now basically the only thing we, really, we need to change in here is if we come across to the boot tab and we just need to change the, the operating selection. So we need to change that from Windows to Linux. Um, there are other things you might want to change in here but that's just the main thing that we need to do. So we will save that and exit. So that's F10. And then it will be ready to boot up. So from this point forward, you don't actually need a monitor and keyboard anymore, but we will need a network connection. So I'll plug my network cable in. So I've got a network plugged into the back of the Nook. And whenever I install these, I always install it with a network cable plugged into the router. Okay, now if we come to a browser, we should be able to locate the device on our network and I know the IP address already but just look up the IP address in your router and browse to that like so and the port number is 8123 like that and it will come to our home assistant and that's it it's all done it's set up so you can see how fast it is when it's running a Nook. It literally took 30 seconds to set itself up. So we'll just set up our first user in here and create an account. So we can call it the name of, you can name it installation. I'm gonna call it home because this is the one I'm gonna use at my place. It's gonna replace the existing one that I have. And you can set a time zone. I'm gonna set my time zone for Perth, which is plus eight and Sort of worked. Okay. So it's gone out and found all the things that are on my network already. But we will set them up later. So we'll do finish. And that's it. Home Assistant is installed, ready to start setting up. So you can see how fast it is, how super simple it is with a Nook. It does take a little bit longer on a Raspberry Pi and um, that's just one of the reasons why I do use them. Well, Home Assistant is all installed and ready to go on this little nook here. It takes no time at all, as you can see. It usually only takes me five or seven minutes to get it all up and running, including a BIOS update. And uh, that's why I love using these little devices. And now it's ready to take off to a job and I can just put, poke it in the comms rack, and plug it in and continue setting it up from home via a VPN or something. So that is how you can use this. Look out for more videos on what to do after you've got it set up. They'll be coming very shortly. But if you don't want to spend $300 on buying a Nook like this, but you want something better than a Raspberry Pi, then you perhaps you have an old computer like one of these lying around, a small form factor. You can often get them cheap or free. Um, a friend of mine from How Mac Computing and Nozen Park WA gave me two of these to try out. Um, so thanks for those, um, Steve. That was great. And I've got a Core Duo 2 and I've actually got an i7 here. So that's gonna be pretty cool. I'm gonna try that out um, with some additional software as well. But I'm gonna um, put 
Home Assistant supervised on both of these systems. So look out for the video on how to do that if you would like to do it that way instead. But thanks for watching. If this video was helpful, please give us a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos just like this and how to continue setting up your Home Assistant setup, um, home automation and electrical and electronics, um, please subscribe. I'll catch you next time. Bye.